This is how I got this. I don't want you thinking I got it a different way, you know? Joking aside, this could have been a serious injury, right, from a wiffle ball. So maybe in the future, instead of me wearing protective goggles, I shouldn't hit out balls. First of all, let me define stacking in relation to pickleball. It's a specific technique while you and your partner line up in a specific formation that lets you play to your strengths. If one person's left-handed, you want two forehands. Let me illustrate right now. So we got two backhand middles. What's wrong with this picture? I would say it's not good, right? Our strengths are forehands and we don't have them in the middle. So this is a very good example of stacking when we have a left-handed partner like Ernie. So if they feed a ball in this situation, we have two backhands, right? And we get really confused. Let's switch. And now we have two forehands, right? And it's so simple. We can both take it. Ernie, why don't you try? And it's beautiful when we come in now, we have two forehands as well. So that's another really good reason to stack if you have a left-handed partner. Another time to stack is if you have a huge forehand, right? If me and Ernie are the same exact in every department and I have a better drive and our opponents have somewhat of a slow reaction time, what should we do? Where should I be, Ernie? Should I be on the forehand or backhand side? Forehand side. Forehand side, right? Because we're playing to our strengths. I give an open palm hand signal means I'm moving over to the backhand middle side, right? Stacking on returning. And I know what's coming directly next point. What happens? We stack again because I know exactly what to do. I know exactly what shot to hit. And that's why stacking so good. Check description for paddle discounts and pickable lovers. Let's get started right now. Ernie, we were playing and I couldn't drop, right? That would be a good time for you to stack yeah. to take some pressure off me. Another time is if I'm really struggling in the dinking battles, right, and I don't want that forehand middle, we can stack and have Ernie take that side in a tournament. It really works. This stacking formation allows for better court coverage and better execution of shots because you know where your partner is and you know what to do. Stacking just on serves or stacking just on returns is called half stacking. If we're stacking on serves and returns, it's called full stacking. Pretty simple. Stacking in pickleball allows your team to maximize strengths, right? And we can exploit our team's weaknesses because we can really play to our strengths. What else can we do? We can avoid our weaknesses, right? We don't have to hit that tough backhand. If we're missing a lot of backhand dinks, we can stack and get out of our own head. Ernie, what are some other times we might stack? All right, let's say that early in the game, they hit it down the middle and we put, touch paddles. They're gonna be trying to exploit that. We've got the dominant player on the left who can come in and take it, or I'll be there to back it up as well, so. I like it. But also, we're gonna wanna talk about, early in the game, who's gonna take that in the future. Communication has to be commanded by the dominant player. If I'm the dominant player with a stronger forehand, better dinking on that backhand middle side, I want this in a tournament when pressure's on, right? Because they might be icing you. Yep. And I know he's going to take that shot. You know he's going to take that yeah. shot. You know it. You know what your partner's doing. It's so you. Confidence on the court. You're confident. Yep. Mark just confirmed to Heather that they're not stacking. She's not poaching, right? And then on the serve, they stack. This is called half stacking. When you stack on return or serve only, called half stacking. If you full stack, it's called full stacking, right? Do it all the time. <laughs> Communication helps both players relax, right? And when we relax, we grip that pad up a lot lighter and we make a lot less mistakes, pop it up a lot less and feel a lot better about ourselves. Awesome job, yeah. So one of the times I get confused when we're stacking um, is like, let's say that I'm returning a serve you're sliding over so i'm returning I'm you should be sliding here. right you should be sliding and i got that forehand right if i need help with that backhand i might need help at first and then i really want to command this forehand middle if it's low i really want to take that it's easy to back up that back that backhand means. what what was the question <laughs> well, i don't know if it's a question well my question would be would it be better for me to start off over here okay i got the question here. 
for example, you drive a lot better than your partner, right? Your opponents don't have the best reaction time. I would stack. This also allows for more shake and bakes, right? When else do I stack? When I'm really struggling. I'm missing a lot of backhand dinks on that forehand middle side. So I change formations to give my opponents a different look so we can play to our strengths and exploit their weaknesses. It makes sense. I love to shake and bake, right? And we want to play to our strengths. So I tell Alexandra to go in. We stack. He's really fast on that forehand middle side. So why don't we just do it again? And that's what we do. We know our positions. We know our roles. We're both really fast with that forehand. But he might be a little quicker, right? So let's stack. Ernie's question is about stacking when returning. That's two ways to do it. The first way would be this. Ernie's returning, and I'm stacking right here, right? He returns and runs that way. I slide in, have forehand. The other way we can do it, er Ernie's returning. I'm here. I give him an open palm. That means I'm sliding over, and he's running. His question is, What's better? My answer to you, if you're really fast, I would recommend starting here. If you're a little slower, you're not on the same page with your partner, start on the sideline. It's less likely for you to get confused, but you might not have the element of surprise. Did I answer your question? Good, yeah. <laughs> Not only do I know where Ernie is, I know where he's going to hit, and I know the exact spot on the court, so I know where to be myself. Pretty simple. Don't forget to have a good day. Don't forget to be deceptive. We didn't stack this point, and what an easy put away I get, right? Because our opponents are off balance, and then we stack, and this is a good point. Now the following is for advanced pickleball players only, so if you're a three five at best, I would leave now. <laughs> Joking aside, these are situations when you would permanently stack. Like if you have Ben Johns and he's really quick and he has more power, and he's a better backhand dink, I think you should, right? What are some other situations when you want to permanently stack? If your partner has extremely weak backhand, like extremely weak and your opponents can target, I would stack, have your partner on that backhand middle side. You play that forehand middle cover 60% of the court, so they know they just have to hit that forehand, right? Another time to permanently stack is if you're John Sperling. What does that mean? It means he doesn't miss a third shot drop. He's super consistent. He gets to the kitchen and you win the dinkin' battle if John Sperling's your partner. So that would be a situation to permanently stack. And if your partner is a better dinker than you, like a 0.5 better dinker than you, they should pretty much always have forehand middle or that left hand side of the court. I think that's right. What are some situations you might situational stack? Well, if your partner is making a lot of the same mistakes again and again, especially on that forehand middle side, that'd be a great time to situational stack. When your opponents have a run and you need to change it up, it's a good time to situational stack change up formations, and I touched upon that earlier. Another time to situational stack is if you have a lot faster hands than one opponent on the other side of the court. That way you could speed it up quicker, right? So it's a little more strategic, a little more advanced. And thinking backwards, if your partner has extremely slow reaction times, I want them against a slower opponent on the other side of the court. So I'm gonna line up against the faster opponent. For these stacking advanced concepts, I have a lot more coming in the future. I want to touch upon it right now, but if you subscribe, you won't miss it. Pickleball lovers, take a look at that video. It was decent, but let me ask you a question. When do you stack in pickleball? Are there certain situations you do it in? Please leave it in the comments. Please subscribe. This is all I do for a living. I want to keep doing it. And don't forget to have a good day.